I am leaving you this pre-recorded holographic message because right now I am probably sat binge watching all of the Star Wars movies because it's May the 4th, meaning that it's Star Wars Day. So may the 4th be with you on a happy Star Wars Day. In today's HitFilm tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can become a hologram using HitFilm. If you want to follow along inside of HitFilm Express then you will require some add-on packs. These add-on packs can be seen on screen now. So let's get on with this tutorial. Okay, so we're now over inside of HitFilm, and as you can see, I have a new composite shot that has my footage in it. I have masked out the light stand and my green screen stand and the clamps at the top. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to do a quick key for this green screen. because I am going to be turning myself into a hologram, so it doesn't have to be the cleanest key. So if there are parts of you that are semi-transparent, then that really doesn't matter. So I've just now keyed out my green screen from the background and applied a spell removal to try and remove any leftover green. Now what I'm going to do is colour this in blue. And of course, if you want to change the colour of this, then you can. And also, if you want to change the colour away from the blues that I'm using, then once again, that's fine. It's completely up to you as to how this effect looks. So in the effects tab, I'm now going to search for tint. And then I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the footage layer. Instantly it has taken effect and kind of made me semi black and white. So then I'm going to open up the tint settings in the controls tab. And I'm going to change the map black to, from this black, over to a lightish dark blue. So something around there works quite nicely. And then instead of the map white to, I'm going to change this over to a lighter blue. And then I'm also going to change the amount of tint from 50% to 60%. Of course you can play around with these colours as much as you'd like, getting a look that you prefer. Right. I quite like these colours and if you want to have the exact same colours that I've got, then just pause the video and uh, make notes of those numbers and type them in there. Now what I'm going to do is kind of make it look destroyed and more holographic. So I'm going to search in the effects tab for scan lines. Then I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the footage. And as you can see it's instantly taken effect. So under frequency I'm going to change it from some from 150 over to something around 450. And that's now made the lines a lot thinner. However, it is darkening me, so without the effect, with the effect. It's darkening down the footage. So down at the bottom of the scan lines effect, there is controls over brightness. So I'm just going to increase this until I get some of that brightness back. You might be able to start seeing that I'm being lost within this effect and like I'm just kind of turning into some eyes and a mouth. So inside of the effects tab, I'm going to search for brightness and contrast. If I could spell, that would be amazing. And I'm going to drop this before the tint. So after the spill removal and before the tint. Then I'm going to start increasing the contrast. And this will just return some more of the details. Then what you want to do is add the TV damage effect. So now we're going to add the TV damage effect onto the footage. So just kind of next on the layer stack. And then you want to disable everything other than horizontal hold. So you can either go through each of these, turning off each setting or you can search at the top of the controls tab for enable. You want to leave horizontal hold on. I'm going to turn off everything else. And then under the horizontal hold settings, I'm going to change the frequency over to something around 270. And this is just kind of reducing the amount that it's moving from side to side. And under Amplitude, I'm going to change it from 200 to 60. And that's just making an even more subtle effect. Then I'm going to change the regularity from 0 0.1 over to 0 0.5. And that's made it so that there are more of these glitches more often. Of course, you can change that to have more or less completely as to how you want it. And we're now really getting there. We're starting to see some more of the effects that we want. 
I am then just going to drag a curves down from the effects tab and put that next on the layer stack because I want to increase the blues again. Then under the curves channels, I'm going to change it over to the blue channel. Then I'm just going to increase this. I'm also just going to increase the greens ever so slightly just to make it slightly lighter. I do want to make this even more distorted and kind of blocky. So I'm going to go up to the effects tab and search for block displacement. And then I'm going to drag this onto the footage layer. In the block displacement I'm going to change the size from 64 down to 8 pixels. And now that's kind of broken me up into even smaller pieces. And then under, dis under displacement I'm going to change it from 256 down to 10. And that's displacing the pixels less. Then under block settings, I'm going to change the displace blocks from 100% to 25%. And this is only displacing 25% of the blocks that my image has been cut up into. Then I'm also going to change the aspect ratio from 1 over to 8. This is to make the blocks more rectangular rather than them being squares. However, as you can see, the blocks aren't moving, meaning that it's not looking all that distorted. So I'm going to go back to the first frame of the timeline and activate keyframing for the seed property. Then I'm going to go to the last frame of the timeline and I'm going to increase the seed property. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add some glows to this footage because it's a hologram and it's probably going to be glowing. So under the effects tab, I'm going to search for glow. Then I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the footage layer. And that has already started to make an effect. And I actually quite like that. So I'm going to leave that first one the same, and then I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. Then, under the settings for the glow, I'm going to start increasing the radius. And then I'm also just going to increase the threshold and decrease the intensity slightly. Then, under the per channel intensity settings of this second glow, I'm going to start increasing the blue. This is just adding a slightly more bluey glow to this. Then I'm going to duplicate this one more time. Increase the radius. Decrease the intensity. And increase the threshold. No, decrease the threshold. If you do have HitFilm Pro, then you could go ahead and add some inner glows just to lighten out the edges. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Yeah, so if you want to add the inner glows, they are only available inside of HitFilm Pro. However, the effect does still look pretty cool without them. Of course, if you're compositing this into a background, you might want to make sure for a start that your key is completely clean uh, for spots in the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and alter some of this. You also might want to decrease the opacity of this entire layer. So go into the transform settings of the layer and I'm just going to decrease the opacity to being something like 95%, just to bring in a slight level of opacity. Of course, that's completely up to you as to how much you want to do that to. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, then please feel free to ask them in the description, and also if you have any tutorial requests, then also please feel free to ask as well. So, hope to see you then. May the force be with you. Goodbye.